I'm going to start off with uh, talking about um, Word and a little bit about PDF, and then I'll pass it on to to, to Brad. Um, but why don't we uh, just get right to it? Let me uh, share my screen first. Okay. So, can everybody uh, see my screen correctly? We do. <laughs> All right, great. Um, well, as far as uh, Microsoft Word, um, headings is very, very important. Um, for students that are visually impaired and using screen readers like JAWS, Headings are like uh, their exit signs. Uh, for example, uh, when making a syllabus, you may have sections such as a uh, course description, required reading, or schedule of uh, assignments due. Each of those can be separate headings. Without headings, a JAWS user would have to listen through the entire document to find the specific section that they're looking for. Also, um, heading styles do not need to stay the, the way it is when, when selected. And that's, that's a nice option that you have. If you say we uh, want to change the second one here, headings 2, we'll highlight that, go to home, and we will choose, uh, we'll go with aerial rounded and we'll change it to a bright red. Okay, so all we need to do now that we've changed that is go to Heading 2, right click it, and select Update Heading 2 to match selection. Okay, so you didn't see any uh, change here on the, on, on the document itself but if you look at heading 2 you see that it has changed so if we do decide to make another heading and then change that to a heading 2 as you see that's then set alright had to get a good sip of some uh, cold water. All right, our next uh, thing to keep in mind uh, with, with documents is alternative text. Uh, all of this uh, at some time when we've created a document we would put a picture in somewhere. I just figured uh, I'd put some happy uh, cat in here. Um, well the easy way to, to use alternative text for any graphic is just put the mouse over there and right click on it Oops. right click on it and go to format picture here in these choices at the very bottom is alt text so uh, we need to use the description part of it JAWS and other screen readers that's the only thing that they're looking for as far as a graphic description so we will just put happy cat and close. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up a, sc a screen reader, JAWS to be exact, and we'll, we'll go over that. JAWS for Windows is ready. Seven ways word example. Okay. So I'm going bring to it, bring it here and uh, have it read from alternative text point. Alternative text, tables, name, birthday, GPA, Joe Smith, 12, 8, 91, 3 point alternative. Okay, and of course it skipped right over the, the graphic. Let's see here. There are no headings in this document. Yeah, sorry for the delay. Of course, uh, so often uh, with 
with live videos, something has to go wrong. Cuz E, size and positions. Leaving menus, close button, that list box, all text, list box, alt, format picture, dialog, all text, seven ways wording. And as you see with uh, the screen reader, uh, like JAWS, it basically reads everything that is being done, whether with the mouse or with the keyboard. And that just helps the people that are uh, visually impaired or blind to know exactly what's going on. So let me uh, just save this. I'm uh, actually going to close this and open it back up. Um, Seven ways items view multi select list box. Seven ways script docs. Eleven heads with seven ways word example docs. Cancel button to activate press space bar. Seven ways word example docs. Microsoft Word print view. Heading level one headings for students that are visually impaired. Headings are like at heading level two. The next time we use heading two or change. And as you see, as I go down line by line, it just reads that line that I'm on. Um, so we'll just continue Reverse this. Settings. Heading level two, another heading. Length. Heading level one, alternative text. Happy cat 3.49 inches wide by 2.79 inches high. Okay, so finally, uh, as you as you saw there, um, it picked up that there was a graphic. It read the alternative text um, of it, and even gave us the size of the the picture. Um, so let's move on to tables, and I'm going to turn turn off the Context jaws one of three to move through while I'm explaining it, so we won't um, hear that. Um, but with tables, what is important to um, keep in mind is the way to make tables accessible for um, screen readers. Uh, so um, so it will be able to um, identify what column the, the information is in, uh, such as Joe Smith or the, the birthday or the GPA. Um, what you'll need to do is go to the main like column headings um, row. Um, we'll go up to Um, insert and select bookmark. As you see, I've already put in column title. Um, this is what makes it possible for JAWS to then recognize the columns. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you now um, the difference that it makes, and then we'll take it out and see if you notice the difference. Okay, so I'm gonna just cancel that. I'm gonna. Turn JAWS back on. JAWS for Windows is ready. Seven ways word example. Okay. So now I'm going to just go through the uh, uh, each cell of the table. Joe Smith, one, row two of four. Tab, 12, 8, 91. Selected, column two of three. Tab, 3.46, cell 3.7, eight, peer three, length, column two of three. Let's see. Ship tab. Mika Taylor selected. Column one of three. Yeah, I'm sorry about this, y'all. Um, yeah, it's not picking that up either. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. Bookmark name. Edit combo. Column title. The center value. Use the arrow. Column title is the specific. Word that you do need to uh, put in there for uh, columns. For now, we will delete it and then I'll delete just add it back in. Okay, so as you see now, as unfortunately it was doing just a little while ago, it wasn't reading the, the column heading uh, before it read the data in the in the cell. So now, now I'll go ahead and try try this once again. Let's go up here to bookmark. Bookmark A. Edit combo. The set the value. Use the arrow keys or type the value. Alt plus B. 
Okay. Okay, we'll go ahead and add that in. Seven ways word example box uniform table column two of three row three of four tab three point eight seven. Bookmark name edit combo column title to set the value use the arrow keys or type the value. Cancel button to activate press space bar seven. Tab six twenty eight eighty nine tab three point eight seven. Well, I tell you one thing, uh, <laughs> we're having a lot of fun here. Uh, things aren't going quite as planned. Um, let me um, just skip to links to kind of tell you the best best practice for when you're using links in documents or or presentations or, or wherever you're planning to use these. Um, for, for JAWS and other screen readers, it is able to bring up um, a, a separate screen showing links. And if I remember this right, Heading list dialog. Okay. Heading list view. Links one. While I've got this uh, headings list, this is one of the things that they are able to bring up. Um, just especially if it's a long document, um, they're able to skip easily through through headings. So as as you saw uh, when we were working on those uh, headings too that we uh, that we that we changed, um, this shows them there. And so this this is an easy way to to uh, then select one of the headings. And just hit enter. Out of table. Heading one stop. And as you see there, that's that's how it brought it um, to to tables. But we can also bring up links list the links. Links. So there we go. Um, there's the link screen that they most likely will be using. And so this is kind of to show you the importance of uh, putting a name with your links or making making the words themselves the link um, because if they see this out of context um, or or seeing headings out of context uh, it can be confusing um, so with with this one that I've already created I'll go ahead and just hit, to hit enter and, and so it just changes the there box. and then it will go ahead and bring up, bring up the browser Seven um, ways word example. Docs Microsoft. Okay, I see a question. Uh, where do you see headings list? Is that in JAWS? Okay. Yes, when I brought up that separate window um, of headings and and links, those are screens that work with JAWS. That's not something that is with Word or with Windows in general. Um, so I hope that that made it clear. All right. So another way that we could we could uh, edit this this link here, and this is a good practice, is highlight highlight the text uh, USC Disability Services, as well as including the link after the after the text. Um, when you have have what you want to create a link. As go ahead, highlight it. Right click. Copy C. Select hyperlink S. Menu group. And then we can go to edit. Edit the the hyperlink, and it brings us to this this screen here. We could change it in the address. 
if we'd like. Um, this is the text that it will uh, create the link as. So we'll just go ahead and hit OK. Seven ways word example docs grid view edit. Okay. And so that that then just makes that entire um, line the link. This is showing you the word documents. Okay, I see a, a question. Uh, expound on the best practice for placing a link in the document versus using click here. And that that is such a great question. Um, this is something that we do all the time in email or, or web pages. Um, as I showed you, uh, since we have JAWS open, I'll go to that that screen. Matter of fact, let me first um, type in something as an example. Click here to learn more about accessibility. Okay. And I'll uh, do as I just did with the, the link above. I'll highlight this, right click on it, Let's go to hyperlink. And then I'll just make this the same the same link. There we go. Okay. All right. So Okay, so if I go back now to the uh, the links screen, this now is out of context um, for a person that's blind, depending on depending on this links uh, list screen. So they see. There's this link here. Um, I have the ability to just stop it. That's why it, it stopped short, if you were wondering. But then they go to the next link. Click here. Two of two. Click here. Well, to them, looking at, at this screen, click here. Well, they have no idea um, if they click on it where it will bring them. That's why it is it is great to to use an example um, or use it as I did above or instead of using the sentence like that let's reword this um, L E A R Learn more about accessibility. Accessibility. So Highlight accessibility. And then just make it that way. Okay. Um, so that is very important. Um, it, it's so easy to to not think anything of that. Um, I did it for forever before I really learned about all this. Um, okay. Five point six. I'm sorry about about the uh, problems I was having with with tables here. I'm going to try that one more time. Let's see here. Table one, uniform table, row two of four, Joe Smith, page one, Joe Smith. Tab twelve eight ninety one. Select. Yeah, that's that's still not working. I I do apologize about that. I need to uh, check on that. And one possibility is that I just have so many things open on my screen or open on my computer right now. Um, but uh, let's see. 
what we'll do is uh, just move on to the next topic. Uh, I don't want to use up too much time. Um, what is nice about um, Word and, and the latest Microsoft Office um, software is is that we have the ability to save as Adobe PDF files. I'll go ahead and click, click on this. Yes. Save Adobe. Okay, so I already have one in here. We'll just we'll just overwrite that. Okay. Now with PDF files, what is very important to make it accessible for people that use screen readers. If we go into options here, Option. in this list, uh, what needs to be checked is enable accessibility and reflow with tagged Adobe PDF. Um, I think by default it just is is uh, checked. So um, I'll just go ahead and hit Options OK. Button. Save button. And hit press save. to activate. Press space bar. And yes. Acrobat PDF make seven All right, ways so for here, here is our uh, PDF document. Seven ways were an example. Come on. There we go. PDF All right, sorry about the delay of, of not responding. Okay, so now. Seven ways were an example PDF. So it can now um, read this this seven page. Seven ways here. were an example PDF graphic happy cat seven ways to make your class accessible edit level one headings for students that are visually impaired and using okay. screen readers like JAWS JAWS comma. Context. Over here, if we click on this list, I right click Bookmarks, B, signature. and then go to tags. Leaving menus. This this is what it's reading. All of this has been set up by Word when we saved it. Okay. Um, so if you do have Adobe Acrobat and you're able to create your own PDFs or or, or save them like this from Word or some other software, then um, this is what you want to uh, make sure is in so uh, people that use screen readers will be able to actually read this. So with us in PDF now, I'm going to pass this over to uh, Brad uh, who has uh, some more information about that. Okay, So let me uh, quit sharing my uh, my screen. Stop sharing split button. Yes. Yeah. All right. Can everybody hear me? All right. To go back to that first question of did your Word document have to be accessible in order for the PDF to work properly? Yes, it does. Um, if you make your Word document accessible and have all the headings in the proper places and switch over to a PDF, it should have everything correct for the PDF to have it accessible. All right. So PDFs, a PDF is accessible if um, you've done the Word document correctly, tagged it, or done the headings correctly, um, made your tables correctly, used the correct fonts and the correct sizes, um, and then saved it as a PDF, or if you've done something such as printed off a document, 
or if you're scanning a book in, you can scan it through a scanner. Um, typically, you can save it as a PDF. Um, just saving it as a PDF isn't accessible. Um, you have to make sure you run it through a process known as OCR, which is optical character recognition, which when you take a piece of paper and scan it through a scanner, it's just taking a picture of the paper. What you want to do, what OCR does is it takes a picture of the letters and turns it into actual letters so it can be read by screen readers in text-to-speech software. So what I'm going to do now is show you a PDF that has not been OCR'd. Actually, it tells me. Um, as soon as I open it, um, this page consists of an image that is not, there's no text. But say it doesn't tell you that when you open it, because most of the time it won't. An easy way you can tell is you and I can read it. Um, but say you want to go select something, you notice the entire document is selected. How you can fix this is you can go to Tools in your Adobe. Under Text Recognition, you can go to in this file. What it's going to do is run OCR either in all the pages that you've scanned or in this current file or page. Um, let you know how it's going to output your pages. You just click OK and it's going to run OCR on your document. And then after that, you can notice that you can actually highlight the text within your document. Devin, the OCR is only on Adobe Acrobat Pro. Um, you cannot get it anywhere else. Um, the free editions allow you to open Adobe um, PDF documents, um, but you, in order to actually do the text recognition, you have to do um, Adobe Pro. Welcome. Um, also, JAWS 16 that just came out last week does have a new feature that allows them to turn um, PDF documents into uh, PDF images that have not been OCR'd into actual text documents. Um, but just because that's been released and is more helpful to them doesn't mean we can stop turning our images into OCR documents. Um, and of course, if you guys have questions with any of this, we'd be more than happy to help you. Um, I think I'm done with my little part. Um, Bradley? Back to Dow for the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, we got it. Never mind. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Brad. Um, so let's go to Excel. Microsoft Excel, seven ways Excel example. Okay. Um, going through Excel should be uh, pretty quick because the main thing. Yes, let me uh, <laughs> let me first share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Share my screen. Click drop down to view other sharing options. Split button. Start screen share. Sharing full screen. You are sharing. All right. So back into Excel. Um, the the Excel spreadsheet, of course, is is a great great tool, and it is easy to make make accessible. Um, what you need to do is whenever you day, have day one. have the headings. M7 Microsoft Excel. I'm sorry about the jaws. Day, day. I'm just gonna have to mute him for just a minute. Okay. For the for the headings, um, if you uh, just uh, select the select the first first cell in the row of the column uh, headings or, or titles, um, 
so for in this example date um, and then we'll go to the formulas tab up here and um, go to name manager here and uh, I've already uh, gone ahead with uh, column title um, column title is the appropriate um, one to use as as I was showing in the word as well um, so we'll go ahead to close since I've already put it in there okay so we can hear jaws again um, now I'll just um, go through a cell by cell. 10, 12, 20, 14, A2. Topic Edmix B2. Okay, so did you notice um, that it said topic uh, before it said ethics? We'll go to the next cell. Reading. Chapter 1, PP 1228, C2. Okay. Chapter 2, PP 5, Chapter 3, PP 7289, C4. We'll move back to the topic um, column. Topic poetry B4. Okay. So uh, if you notice that it's saying whenever you go to a new column, it shows um, or it first reads the, the heading or the title of that column before it reads the data in the cell. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just delete that so you can see the difference. Name manager dialog. Delete button, name manager, micro, Microsoft. Poetry, B. Okay. So we'll just start 10, 12, here. 20, 14, A2. Ethics, B2. Chapter 1, PP 12, 28, C2. Chapter 2, Discourse, B3. Okay, so as you see, it doesn't read the, the column heading of that. And so, especially if you have like a big... Um, big spreadsheet with a lot of information that can really uh, be difficult to go through that information and and just get confused exactly where they are so again I'll just uh, show you uh, one more time how to do that uh, we go to name manager oh and first it has to be has to be in the first cell of the heading um, cop uh, the heading row and so yeah if we're, if we're here we go to the formulas tab we go to name manager name manager dialog new button and we'll create new new name dialog and so we will name this C -O -L -U -N -N. column T -I -T -N -E. title and just hit OK Game Manager Dialog. All right, and so there it is again. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hit close. Date A1. All right, so let's move through these cells again. 10, 12, 20, 14, Topic, Ethics, B2. So as you saw, um, it read Topic before Ethics. Reading, Chapter 1, People. Okay, so that's, that's uh, important to keep in mind. Um, whenever you're using spread, a spreadsheet that you will definitely share with your students or, or whoever you're working with. Um, so, uh, yeah, overall it's simple. The thing though is just remembering to do that. Um, for, the, for the rest of the uh, seven ways, uh, we have videos. That, that we've already created. So we'll go to those now and um, seven ways to make and so you can enjoy these videos that we've uh, made. I'll go ahead and enlarge this. So we'll start with a uh, PowerPoint. To make your class accessible. Yep. This section, we will welcome to 
to the seven ways to make your class accessible. In this section, we will discuss Microsoft PowerPoint and how to make sure your presentations are accessible. There is a good chance you've used PowerPoint if you've made let me pause this real quick because I did want to uh, point out that if you do have any questions uh, of information that you see on here, please ask and then we'll cover questions at the end of this, okay? Sorry about that. In a presentation form. These presentations can include objects such as text boxes, special word art, lists, clip art, graphics, photos, audio clips, video, shapes, and charts. Slides can become pretty complex, but when possible, keep it simple. JAWS and other screen reader software for people that are visually impaired reads from top to bottom and left to right. Keep this in mind and keep objects in that correct reading order while creating each slide to prevent information from not being read properly. Additionally, some information may not be read at all. Keep the slide simple with just a few objects per slide. To make sure the information is all included and read properly, duplicate the information using the notes field. Like said previously, some information may not be read at all from some of the slides. That's the benefit of the notes pane. So let's go through a PowerPoint presentation example and review the accessibility parts of it. We'll use this example I created from information I pulled from the USC University 101 website. To start, with all photos or graphics, like the group picture on this slide, they will need a description in the alt text section of the format screen. So let's right click on the photo and select format picture. And in the list of options on the left of the screen, at the bottom is alt text. Let's click on that. For the JAWS screen reader, it only reads the words from the description part of the alt text. So we'll put our description there. To speed up the process, I've already got all the words ready on this other screen, this notepad screen. So I'll highlight and copy these words here. I'll leave out photo since it's already identified as a photo by PowerPoint. So I'll paste it. It now says group of U101 students posing for a picture. I'll click close. That group photo is now good. Let's do the same for the photo at the bottom of the slide. Right click, select format picture, alt text, and I'll put, as you see, Palmetto Tree, USC, Academic Logo, University of South Carolina. Now, what is also important to keep in mind is using the notes pane here at the bottom of the screen under the slide. Using the notes will help ensure proper reading order of the information on the slide. For this first slide, let's just quickly copy and paste the information. I'll take the title, University 101 Programs, and paste it here in the notes. Now I'll go to the notepad file and copy the other information for the picture and graphic world. I like to use the keyboard shortcuts for copy, cut, and paste. Copy is control C, cut is control X, and paste is control P. These are shortcuts for Windows. Mac computers may be different. These just help to speed it up a little bit. For the second slide, as you see, I've already completed the notes below. But let's check the graphic for alt text. Yes, I don't have that there yet. I'll close this and copy the description from the notes pane. OK, 
Okay, now select the graphic and right click format picture of text, paste it in the description section. Since the rest of the slide is text, all of that is already accessible. Basically, slide three is identical to slide two. I've already completed everything, so let's move on. One thing to keep in mind is to do your best with keeping things in logical order. As mentioned earlier, JAWS reads from top to bottom and left to right. In this slide, as you see in notes, it shows graphic 87%, United States graphical map with all gray states except Garnet, South Carolina, then the percent of college and universities across the country that have since created a first year seminar. So that's the way a screen reader will read the slide. With JAWS, we hear everything that is done on the computer, whether by using the mouse or by using the keyboard. Let's put this in the slideshow mode now and listen to JAWS. College and universities across the country, 87%. United States graphical map with all gray states except Garden, South Carolina. The percent of colleges and universities across the country that have since created a first year seminar. So the way it was heard, for someone that can't see the screen and listens to a screen reader, might not understand that completely because of the way the 87% was separated by the description of the United States graphic. Let's switch places of the text of the percent and the graphic. I'll cut the graphic and move up the text. Now I'll paste the graphic back on the screen and move it to the bottom. Now let's listen to it again with JAWS. PowerPoint slideshow PowerPoint accessibility example PPPX college and universities across the country slide past notes slide four college and universities across the country the percent of colleges and universities across the country that have since created a first year seminar 87 percent United States graphical back with all gray states except Garden South Carolina. So that gives you an idea of the importance of how and where you put the information on each slide. Unfortunately, I've seen some objects, such as the chart on this slide, aren't accessible for screen readers. Let's open the slideshow mode again. PowerPoint slideshow PowerPoint accessibility example PPTX students recommended slide past notes slide five students recommended chart annual increase of students likely to recommend future students to take university 100 but by average mean on five point scale 2007 average equal 4.1 2008 average equal 4.45 2009 4.55 accessible, then why did we hear the details? Remember alt text? That's been completed already. Let's take that out. So we'll click on the chart, right click, and format chart area. Now alt text will delete the description. Now let's try it again. PowerPoint slideshow PowerPoint accessibility example PPPX students recommended slide past notes slide five students recommended. So that shows the importance of using alt text. There may be times you'd like to include a video on your presentation. This is another object that might not be accessible or work correctly on the slide. This can affect students that are visually impaired using screen readers or students with a disability, causing them to be fully dependent on the keyboard, no mouse. For the video, you can, of course, use alt text, but you can't include everything for the entire video in that description. So, to help make it easier, all 
also include the source of the video so the student can select that link and go directly to the site. That would increase the chance of success. But please remember, as this topic is one of our seven ways to make your class accessible topic, before you post this video, please make sure it has been captioned or there is easy access to a transcript for that video. So this video is a summary about the University 101 program. This example presentation has covered the main things that most of us may use in presentations we create for classes or other educational purposes. For more information, feel free to contact our Disability Services Office at USC by phone at 803-777-6142 or by email at allmedia at sc.edu. Okay. Escape seven ways. So that was uh, one of um, our videos. Let me. Yes, uh, uh, address question, question number three question. and seven. Okay, number three and seven. Some departments have essential. Oh. Yeah, let me uh, scroll down. We're still at the top of the other class. Okay. Zero. So number Hot three. Color. What is the best practice for links that are very lengthy? Okay, very good question. Um, and this is what uh, could be done for that. Um, would you be talking about uh, a, like a long link? That right. Link this that goes back to your in sample in your Word document when you were linking to like um, the accessibility office and there was a question about click here. What if you have a link that's, you know, two, three lines long? Yeah. Okay. Um, what you can do for that is do like I did with, with um, the accessibility. You can write such like a title of that link and then highlight it. Uh, either at that or. Let me uh, mute my uh, speakers right now. Okay, so say accessibility here. You can just use this hyperlink here, um, so it'll show it'll show uh, the text that will display, and then put that long link right right in here in the address um, bar here. Um, that way. Okay, so you're you're saying that the as long as the text it. that is linking to makes sense. Yes. Does that answer your question? Um, okay. In the other question, you pointed out. Let's see. Yes. So number seven was it? I'd like to answer as many as possible. Um, but we can go to number number seven. Uh, when done, can you demonstrate how to check Word, P, EPT, PDF, and Excel to find out if they are accessible? Okay. Yes, um, one thing that that Microsoft has done a good job with um, is creating, let's see, 
creating a way of testing testing for accessibility. Let's see. Um, bad thing is I uh, I know for PowerPoint I don't remember exactly yeah. how to get there. Um, let's see. Oh, I think it's in here. Isn't it? Um, let's check. There we go. Okay. Um, so when you are when you're done with your document, and this is this is the same with uh, spreadsheets, um, presentations. Uh, you'll go to File, and then in Info, and then check for issues. So check accessibility. Okay. So it'll just show over here. One, one we have is table missing alt text. Let's highlight, highlight this, um, and we will just right click and go to table properties. And yeah, we do have the option of uh, um, creating alt text for this for this table. We'll just put table uh, for now. Um, for Word, fortunately, it's not as big of a thing um, to to actually give the table a name, since it's all text and and JAWS and other screen readers recognize immediately that it is a table. But if if there was some reason you'd want to give the table a specific name, that would be fine. Um, and then the other one, no header row. And go back. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a. My mind is going blank on me. I apologize for that. It does. Uh, what's nice though is it does provide uh, information uh, here on the bottom. Uh, with any issues that that are provided, so um, we can just look here. Um, I don't want to uh, use up too much time, but like I said, uh, with any issues that you select, it will show additional information, and. Um, what what I often go to um, for for answers is webaim.com. Um, that's a great great website that is focused on uh, web accessibility, but it does provide um, information for documents or videos or or other things that would be. Um, uh, posted in your online course. Okay, um, so let's uh, get to our our next next video. Okay, I just uh, uh, saw this. Uh, Quick question: uh, What parts of PowerPoint will JAWS not see? Well, um, the the chart uh, was one one example. Um, I'll go ahead and open up PowerPoint real quick.
rather instead of actually opening up a PowerPoint, um, these are the things um, here. Uh, shapes could be an issue. Uh, this is where you would need to um, right click format shape and then use the alt text. Um, also, yeah, like I showed the, uh, the chart, um, word art can uh, be an issue at times. Um, in most cases, it should read it fine, uh, but you can al always um, just go to, to that, to the alt text of word art, and make sure that will be okay. Um, but those those probably are the main things. And now I want to uh, interject something. I showed in the video. Um, okay. So we'll move on now to to the video about um, flyers, posters, brochures, and accessibility. So let's let's get started with that. Make your class accessible, accessible flyers, posters, brochures, YouTube, open parent document buttons, open parent document buttons, seven ways to make your class accessible, new tab page, open parent document button. seven ways to make your class accessible, seven ways to make your class accessible, caption, seven ways to make your class accessible, PowerPoint accessibility. I'm sorry about this, y'all. Let me close Jaws. Hey, Dow. Jaws likes to talk. Okay. Try this again. Welcome to the seven ways to make your class accessible. In this section, we will discuss ways to make your special documents, like flyers, posters, and brochures, accessible. A big part of making these types of documents accessible is simplifying them. First, first, if there are columns used to separate sections, you should bring them together in the appropriate order in one column. Keep this simple by avoiding graphical design. If there are graphics or images with value and meaning, it is fine to keep them in the alternative version. Make sure you do include alt text to explain the graphic to students using screen readers. Last, enlarge the text to at least 14 or 16 point font size while using sans serif font face such as Verdana or Tahoma. Here's an example of an original flyer. This is from the USC Career Center. Flyer is showing the information in three different columns. Because JAWS and other screen reader software reads text from top to bottom, left to right, a document like this flyer may not be read in the desired order by the screen reader. Let's fix that. The accessible version of the flyer might not be as catchy, but for those that are blind, depend on screen readers, merging columns together in the appropriate way, guarantees the screen reader will convey the information in the way it is meant to be. This also helps the students that are visually impaired using assistive software or devices by preventing the need to skip around the document for different sections. Everything is in order while reading from top to bottom. For information, feel free to contact our Disability Services Office at USC by phone at 803-777-6142, by email at altmedia at sc.edu. Okay. Uh with me working with one screen, I uh, wasn't able to see 
see some of you uh, saying that it was very, very quiet. And that's why we do captioning. Um, so I hope you were able to follow through through there with the captioning. Um, if you would like me to repeat that one, please let me know. If, if all of you feel, feel okay with, with that topic, um, uh, please, please ask some questions. Uh, Dow, we have me. a question. We were wondering if, uh, Dow, we have a question. Um, okay, somehow do that. use the graphically interesting handout or flyer and then put a alternate text one without the columns or whatever makes it so difficult for the reader. I mean, how would you do that? Because you want to be able to appeal to both audiences, multiple audiences, those who can see and those who cannot. Those students who can see yes, and, and those who are visually impaired. Excuse me? Correct. Yes. Uh, I wasn't really saying in that video that you have to um, create all of all of your documents that way. You can um, just take the time and uh, do both. Um, but when you do uh, do columns, um, you'll just need to um, make sure that it is in the correct order. Um, for for jaws to be able to pick that up correctly, um, but that can be a difficult uh, um, a problem at times. So you can just keep that in mind and and do both. Have the option for the for the student if they have a problem. Uh, just you just ask or they. Uh, they ask you or point out that it's that it's difficult, um, but as much as possible, just keep it uh, keep Thank it you. simple. Um, I hope that kind of answers what you were asking. Okay, yes, ma'am, you're welcome. Any other questions as far as um, as far as that? Okay, so we'll just move move on to the other one then. We'll go to fonts. And let me uh, Okay. All right, so let's uh, go over um, fonts now. Fonts with 
letters that are narrowly spaced and close together. Here's a list of some fonts that are sans serif fonts that you should keep in mind. Antique Olive, Tonoma, Verdana, Helvetica, and a specially made font, a font, created by American Printing House for the Blind. A font font can be downloaded for free from their website www.aph.org slash products slash a font and a font is spelled a p h o n t while using and deciding which fonts to use. Here are best practices to follow. Always let justify. Double space between paragraphs. Avoid using all caps or bold for large amounts of text. Avoid italics altogether. Italics can transform the font to a serif style font, which may be difficult. To read. Avoid using columns on accommodated enlarged print documents. Instead, just add the text from the next column under the text from the previous column. For those that are visually impaired, this will ease the readability of them. Also, for provided enlarged print documents using Legal size paper fits more text on the pages. Just something to keep in mind. Readability is more important than matching the exact formatting of the original document. Last, when keeping font size in mind, the term in large print means 14 to 16 point for large Large print. 18 point or larger. The main thing to remember with font size is to at least use 14. It's certainly okay to ask the student if that size is appropriate. For more information, feel free to contact our Disability Services Office at USC by phone at 803 777 by email at altmedia at sc.edu. Okay. Um, any any questions about um, fonts? On screen. Dow, are you talking about uh, yes. Just on screen or also in your document and presentation? Or should it be practice to use those fonts regardless? Oh. Yes, it, yeah, that's what I'm uh, trying to point out. For anything that, um, that you're presenting, that you're providing for your students, um, you should keep that in mind with the fonts. Um, the good thing with uh, websites, even though they should be used for websites, um, when, when it is online, uh, they are enabled, uh, they are able to enlarge the screen, but it, it can still be quite a challenge um, when it's, when it's uh, uh, just serif type fonts. Okay. Any other, any other questions related to fonts? Okay. So I'll go to our our last video and last topic of um, seven ways.
and this is one thing that was mentioned uh, in the PowerPoint uh, video. So let's get this one started. Welcome to the seven ways to make your class accessible. In this section, we will discuss captioning and transcribing for videos provided online. With any videos provided for your classes, they must be captioned or have a transcript that can be accessed at the same time as the video. In other words, don't require a video to be watched or be free of class, but then not post the transcript until we Let's now review some of the great tools and websites for captioning. We'll start with Camtasia Studio software. It is an all-in-one great tool. It provides the ability to do screen recording and then the easy editing of the video create a couple Camtasia Studio features related to this topic of captioning are speech-to-text and caption. The value of the speech-to-text doesn't quite match the value of the next software we will discuss, but it still is pretty good. It can improve over time by training Camtasia Studios website is www.textspin.com slash camtasia.html so that next software is Dragon Naturally Speaking. First, Naturally Speaking is the Windows version. Dragon Dictate is the Mac version. They are basically the same and will use the names interchangeably. Naturally Speaking is the most commonly used voice recognition speech to text software. Speaking the transcript of your video in this software can possibly come the speed of typing the text in half or more. It will take some time to train it to get it better and better. The website for Dragon Naturally Speaking is www.nuance.com slash dragon. Nuance is spelled N-U-A-N-C-E. Probably all of us have seen at least one video on YouTube. Many of us might have even posted our own videos, whether educational, related, or personal. YouTube does make the ability to caption a video that has been uploaded. Pretty easy. For more information about YouTube captioning, visit https://youtube/topic/301433. is a third-party website that provides the ability to caption videos, viewers, or other owners that have been uploaded to YouTube. This YouTube's captioning feature has improved over the years. I recommend starting with them. WebAIM.org is a comprehensive website focused fully on web accessibility. It doesn't only include website-related material and advice, but it also includes accessibility guidance for Microsoft documents, presentations, and much more. In addition, it provides captioning, transcribing, and audio information that can be helpful. This can be found at www.webaim.org slash techniques slash captions. For more information, feel free to contact our Disability Services Office at USC by phone at 803-777-6122 or by email at altmedia at sc. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but you've already seen that a few times now. Um, okay. So, are there any questions related to captioning or transcribing? Dow, um, we were having a conversation earlier about creating learning objects and maybe various games for our online courses. Uh, uh -huh. and depending on what you're doing in those learning objects, there can be layers on top of layers, and it gets hard to transcribe and alt tag and, and all of that. What are your suggestions for? Wanting to be creative and provide interactive content 
that can be difficult to also um, either transcribe or um, provide an alternate version. Okay, and the the learning. Uh, what did you a, call a learning it? object? Mm -hmm. It could be a game. It could be um, maybe flashcards or think about something along those lines. Okay. Hot spots. Think about those learning objects that have hot spots. So you, you as the learner, would okay. hover over an object and it up mm -hmm. the hot spot would tell you what it is. How do you address that when you're trying to be accessible at the same time? Okay, and so is this is this with any specific software, or are you talking about um, on websites? Not, not in particular. Um, I've seen some on the websites. I've seen some that were created with different softwares. Um, you know, you hate to lose the interactivity that you want to place in a course, but if it becomes too difficult to try to make it accessible for other learners, that you know, there's this thin line on what we should do and not do. Right. Okay. I get what you're saying now, and um, this is why before using anything uh, like this, uh, this is why it should always be checked uh, how accessible this object is that you want to use. Um, if it's something that you're uh, getting from some company that uh, provides your service, ask them. Um, uh, feel free to contact our office and we'll be glad to, to check, check with it to see how accessible it is. Um, but uh, since I don't know exactly what what you're talking about that's really the best answer that I can give you um, so just always check with check with that and just keep it in the back of your mind before you uh, make your final decision of using that okay okay anything else Virtual, are there any questions from the virtual participants? I don't see anything in the chat area. We have a question. Okay. I yeah, see Cedric somebody may be. Uh, I'm wondering if I make Cedric a host, would he be able to provide you with a demonstration of what I was talking about? Okay. Um, Cedric, do you have quick access okay. to a, a game or uh, some type of learning object that we could show to see how or if it could be accessible? Okay, let me let me give Cedric host right just to demonstrate what I was talking about. Okay, sure. Okay, Cedric, you're a host. You've been promoted. <laughs> okay, Cedric, so I am going to stop sharing this. I just want to say first that we do have one more um, topic that okay. we want to uh, discuss. Um, but yeah, we'll be glad to. We'll be glad to uh, have you share what what is being talked about. I'm gonna stop sharing now. Cedric is also an instructional designer, and speaking on behalf of designers, when we try to help faculty come up with these uh, inter interactive learning objects. Um, now we're faced with how to make them accessible, and so I wanted to give you a quick sample of um, kind of what we're talking about and what area we should go go into. Yes, we see your screen. Okay.
Okay, so this is a game that Cedric created. Um, he, he, he's typing okay. something. He's going to. Uh, All right, so. Oh, someone else created it. I'm sorry, Cedric. <laughs> but he has the capacity to do this, so. <laughs> So basically what it is, the, yeah, the so student will read the question and then drag the object that they think is correct to the um, to the spot and hit submit. And if they're wrong, they get a, a message that they're correct. I see. It will tell them that they're correct. So if we have a, a disabled student in the class and this object has been created, can can Jaws read this? Will they know what to do with it? Or well, of course I can't I can't give you an answer for that since I don't have hand uh, okay. or have access to this. But uh, one thing one thing that I think of immediately with something like this is can you do this using only the keyboard? Um, there are students that um, that have a disability, and they are unable to use use a mouse. Um, so, can you tab through here and select such as the glasses, and then be able to move that? Okay, Cedric is typing. He may can answer that. Okay, this particular one is not currently set up that way, so you're saying we need to keep in mind um, to use the tab features? Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, and then also, uh, as far as screen readers, uh, if you are or when you are able to tab through these things, uh, can the screen reader then uh, recognize the object uh, when it gets okay. to focus. So this one, this one kind of uh, demonstrates weight, and uh, it, it has some animation in okay. it. So, and they have to choose the correct answer, and the the little triangle will move according to what they choose. And if they're correct, they get a Good sticker, if not. Yeah. Um, these, these games are uh, certainly fun to play uh, and all. Um, but for, for any student that, like I was just saying, that cannot use a keyboard, then okay. those are students that are left out. Um, so that needs, you just need to keep that in mind. Uh, when you are interested in uh, getting something uh, like this, check it or um, have someone that, that is an ex uh, assistive technology specialist, have them uh, check it before you decide okay. to go with that path. Thank you, Cedric. Okay. Yeah, thank you uh, for showing showing that, uh, just to give me an idea of what you were talking about. Okay, so is there any other questions about anything that's been covered so far? Is it okay to use um, one of the samples we just showed as long as it's an alternate assignment and not the main assignment? Optional. I mean, optional? An optional, well, that's still, even though you make that as an optional thing, that still leaves out that student that can't, okay. that can't use it. Um, so that's, that's being exclusive. Uh, we want to be inclusive and include all students in the class. Gotcha. Okay, is there anything else? I think we can move to your next your next part. 
All right then. Uh, so I will let uh, Susan um, take over here, um, and uh, we can listen and learn even more. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, are you hearing me? Um, I'm Susan Quinn, and I work at uh, University Technology Services here on in the Columbia campus, and. Um, I work in the teaching and technology services area, which is better known as Blackboard support. And a number of people around the university uh, system are working together on a project to determine the accessibility and usability of Blackboard. The goal of the project is to develop best practices that we can share with everyone who creates materials in Blackboard. Um, these recommendations will be based on information in the literature, but even more importantly, the feedback we get from authentic users. The first part of the project involves interviewing students who have documented disabilities, including students who use adaptive technology such as JAWS or alternative input devices. We will determine which features are commonly used in their class Blackboard site, which features work well for them, and which ones cause problems for these users. The second step will be what we were just talking about, uh, will be to identify the tools that instructors link to from within the class Blackboard site. These could be presentations created with Adobe Presenter or content-specific sites or games like uh, Cedric just showed us, um, where the students are asked to complete uh, an activity. Blackboard and most of the other tools that we use may be technically compliant with accessibility standards but we're more concerned with the usability of different features and tools so that we can advise instructors about best practices and if there are better alternatives that could be used to accomplish the same instructional goal. So this follows right along with, I think we planned it that way, but Cedric said it right before I started talking. Um, what, in preparation for this, um, I'm making a little site to gather all of this information that we're ultimately going to have in here. Agreed. And we're putting it, going to put it here in a site that's going to be much more developed than this. But um, I wanted to go away with something that you all will be able to use. And that is the Blackboard site checklist that's from Temple University's um, Computer Services Department. And they've developed this page, which I will open up. Uh, it's a handout that you can make, or that you can print out, rather. And check, out, check, uh, check off all the things in your site before you go live. Um, and you'll see the different areas, course design, as menu buttons and links and layout, course content, assessment, and documents, layout color and text. There's layout issues, color, and text. And you see where you're just going to be able to check off um, if they apply to your course that you're developing. And then graphics and multimedia. Um, but what I've done in the um, to help, I think, people who are getting used to uh, this whole concept of creating accessible course materials, is I have taken screenshots of that, um, of the checklist, and broken it into the different parts. And under each part, I have resources that you can go to. So, for instance, for the course links, I have links and hypertext, which is the page on WebAIM, and, and uh, Dow talked about WebAIM. It is the go-to if you have any questions about accessibility. They write in a really comfortable, easy-to-understand way. They give lots of examples, that sort of thing. But then I also have some things that go along with the um, information about course links, how to hide a sh or show a menu to the students, how to hide the collaborative tools, adding an email, and then some color contrast checkers. And so that, that would go under course links. Now, on the web page, you'll notice that I don't have the images. And that is purely because I have not gotten permission from Temple to have 
cut up their hand out basically <laughs> and put it on our website. But as soon as I get permission from them, and I, I certainly assume they will let me do that, I will add those pictures to the site so it'll look better. But the links for each of those areas. So I would suggest that you print out the, um, the checklist and first of all, see how your classes stack up right now. And then uh, you can go back in and, and using some of these links to get you started on how to do whatever it is that needs to be checked on. So we're real excited about that. So there, we've got a place to start in it because the rest of it is, is scheduling time with students who you know aren't up to their ears in classwork. And, um, but we're really excited about it. It's, a fairly, it's going to be a fairly long-term project probably to hit all the areas in Blackboard and all of those um, related websites and uh, online tools that people send their students to through Blackboard. And I'm running a little time now. Are you ready for this one? Hey, Sylvan. <laughs> um, but anyway, so hopefully this is something to, to get you started. And we're going to be developing these other uh, Uh, how to kind of things based on feedback from students who are real users of, of assistive technology or just with all any kind of you know cognitive disability. I love to get students with a second language to come in and see what works and what doesn't work. So this is something that is not just us at UTS, um, but um, the um, I just got the note from the hotel. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Um, I do want to give you a website where um, you're going to have links to a lot of this information, the videos that Dow did. Um, there, I also have another note on here about the brochures and text that came up, the columns versus no columns. One of the keys to any kind of instructional uh, design using uh, universal design for learning concepts is to offer options for students, for all students, not just students who are identified student disability services, but uh, give students options any chance you can um, where the learning outcome is going to be the same. Um, okay, and what I want to give you is the best way to do this. Maybe I can type it out on here and make it bigger. www dot SC, no, SA, student affairs, SA, SC dot EDU slash SDS, which is student disability services, and accessibility. Now, let me make this a lot larger. Oops, I can't, I'm in notepad, or not even notepad. Oh, the other thing is I've been working a lot with projects with people using Google Sites, which is why I'm putting this in Google Sites, because I'm sort of the first draft of it all, um, the keeper of the first draft. Um, but ultimately, we probably need accessible Blackboard instructions in a Blackboard organization. But here's the student disability services accessibility link. What? <laughs> I've covered all my notes, I think. We just need questions on any of these topics. Uh, what more do you need from us that, that we can provide in other uh, sessions? Susan, I have a question. Resources or something. You were focusing mm -hmm. on Yes. Accessibility in Blackboard in your course site or your checklist. Um, you were focusing. Your what? In course okay, site but you were focusing on Blackboard. Um, with the would that be different for other LMSs? Possibly. Yes. Veronica, are you still talking? 
Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, we've got dropped I was phone, asking in your in your course in your Google uh -huh. sites the the checklist that you're creating. You are focusing on Blackboard. Well, it's the checklist is from Temple University, and it is to, to make the, uh, for their people to um, have accessible. Okay, but it, are the instructions? Or a process going to be the same for someone who was using, let's say, Desire to Learn or any other LMS? Oh, many, yes, absolutely. Many of the same, like everything we've learned today, doesn't it would work in Blackboard, Desire to Learn, okay. any of the other. Okay. Yeah, and the specific things, I, in fact, they're probably, I, I'm guessing, of course, this is, we're just still in the preliminary stages of uh, getting people to view these and, and evaluate them for, with us. But, um, but I, you know, if, if there's a good way to do a, um, a blog, you know, what are, the, what are the things that help students develop blogs, that would, be a, that would apply to other programs as well. If you're doing blogs, if you're just doing blogs by themselves outside of Blackboard or Desire to you know, what are the things that help students uh, not be too burdened by the technology okay. and where they can be spending time doing the, uh, the learning. It, it just came, it just, okay, I have a question. It just came to my mind that, um, you know, the previous institution where I was, we changed LMSs just about every two years. And so when you said that, I was just trying to envision how all of the work that you would create will adapt to the new LMS should, should you change. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be an issue. The, um, because like I say, the, the features that okay. are Blackboard are also in these other LMSs. Uh, and the, the kind of suggestions that I think the students are going to have are, you know, ways that the instructor can just make it easier, you know, fewer links to, uh, to get to where it is, okay. that sort of thing. It would be universal. Okay. That would be for any program. Does that make sense? But because I'm in right. the <laughs> we're starting with Blackboard. <laughs> but, but I have to say, the question that Cedric um, brought up is a huge, huge problem because so many of us point to websites that we, you know, we don't check them to see if they're um, accessible or usable by students. You know, we just know the link is still active, you know, for each semester. Um, and then certainly some of the tools, I've been working with somebody who does this online tool that's really cool. It's called Virtual Autopsy. And it's just one of these, you know, discovery channel kind of interest kind of thing. But, uh, and I have not checked to see if it's accessible, but it's a huge part of, of their program is to go to that site and do things. And that's the so what would a regular know. faculty member need to know, it, you know about checking a website? Do they go to their local disabilities office, or is there something we should have on site to, to check these various documents and sites? Well, and Dash showed you um, one for just that did it very simply through Word documents, but they have there are a whole bunch of. Um, web accessibility uh, tools as well, Okay. which we can certainly add to that list. Yeah, and this is, I mean, I, I, this isn't new if you've been in the field. I mean, it's been, you know, since I've been, and I've been around for a while in this field of special education and, uh, and disability, that, um, this isn't new, but it definitely the awareness and, is uh, not so out there. So it almost seems like something and, new, and yet it isn't, but um, it doesn't feel like that. But I do have a, a question from an instructor here in, a, in Columbia who's asking, is this mandatory or should we do it just because? And um, this faculty member didn't attend the first session that uh, Karen did, Karen, um, is the director of students for research this year. But, one answer is we do it because it's the law. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. And there have been, I'm not naming names, but there have been two in, um, systems in the state of South Carolina that have been audited and did not pass for having their um, instructional materials and their websites unacceptable. Do you know what, um, outside of a student, a student making a complaint, what would cause a, a unit to be audited? Is it just random or? Oh, just that, I think. Certainly, cer certainly some of the, you can talk, certainly some of the, um, you know, the, the, em em the, the impetus to do, this is from lawsuits, but there's also the fear of not being on TV and newspapers, which is probably. <laughs> okay, Brad, you, you want to add something? Hello. Yeah, and I see the uh, what. What Karen just mentioned, um, OCR does check the websites of schools. Um, but what I, when we were talking about that a little while ago, I was, um, let's see, wanted to show you this, this website, wave.webaim.org. This is a service that they provide where you can just plug in uh, a website. Let me uh, share my screen so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, here. Um, so wave.webaim.org and so we'll just uh, put in uh, Google since it's a simple, uh, simple site. But this, this is a way that you can just plug in any site and it will show you the information here on the left, uh, the errors, the alerts, and uh, this will give you an idea uh, the level of accessibility with, with a website that you're wanting to, uh, to use. Can this uh, web aim check uh, LMS sites like Blackboard since they're password protected? Sure. Um, now, are you, first off, are you talking about um, when you are signed in? You're talking about when you're signed in, Devin. Yes. yes, when you're signed in and you've built this course and you want to check what you've done. Okay. The, con the concern that? is that uh, WebAIM won't be able to check uh, password protected sites. Okay. Correct. And and that's um, how you then just uh, have someone check it check it for you. Um, create like a an account for them, and then have have them go through it. Uh, Wave is not, let me get back to that website, Wave is not the only thing that you need to, need to do um, to make sure websites are accessible. That's also why we thought it was so important uh, as a project that we're, project that we're going to be working on. Is, is, working you, know, on you can read all the statements about all how statements compliant about and how accessible we want all users want users behind the protection of blackboards and password protection, you know, telling us what's really troublesome for them and what uh, are some of the hints and tips that they can give instructors to make it, make the information more available to them. And so outside of each other, so I'm sorry, I was reading some of that. So outside of checking web aim, um, a person would basically need to have access to their accessibility office to see if um, their learning objects or documents or anything like that can be read through JAWS easily. 
and screen readers. It is a great idea um, to have access to someone that um, can use JAWS to, to check it. Um, yeah, JAWS can be expensive to get, um, but many people uh, like uh, services in the school or, or organizations um, in the area can help with that. Okay. Anything else? Anything else, guys, lady? 